it's always good. Uh, I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to meet a bunch of new people. Um, God, I told God a year and a half ago, I'm going to go wherever you want me to go. Send me. I'm going to preach. I'll go preach at a taco stand in downtown Binghamton. I'll preach in a library, even though they don't like you being loud there. But you know, I'll preach everywhere. Amen. Everyone, everyone here today is here on purpose for a purpose. Amen. God controls everything. Amen. Everything. Even if we don't show up somewhere, he's controlling that. Amen. Right? There's a purpose for everybody. There's a purpose for everybody out in Green New York. They don't know it. You know, they got to get activated. Amen. I pray that the Lord reaches out to each and every person. Because there's a God-designed dream in everybody's heart. Amen. And some dreams are different. Right? Some people, their, their dream is to open a soup kitchen. Right? Some people, dream is just to have a family. There's people that they don't have a family, and all they want is a family. Right? But we tend to limit ourselves. Right? We like to make excuses for why we can't reach our dreams, why we can't achieve our dreams. We will say things like, I don't know enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not tall enough, right? I'm too young, I'm too old. My, my excuse, I, I ran from the call, so let me, let me step back and introduce myself a little bit. Um, so I grew up in Binghamton, New York, so it's very different than Green, very different. Uh, I grew up a pastor's kid, so I was perfect. I have no blemishes on my record. Liar. Perfectly innocent. But I've, I've been told since I was a little boy, nine years old, that I was going to be a pastor, Amen. right? And at first, when I was young, I was excited about that, like, yeah, I'm going to be a pastor. And then living with my dad and seeing the phone calls he got, people are calling him all hours of the night, people are asking him about grocery lists and, and what should they read or what they should eat, and I'm like, I can't be a pastor. That's too much, Amen. right? So I kind of I kind of stepped back and I... Uh, the Lord always pulled me back in. Like, I would step away, I would get into a little bit of trouble, and the people that were picking me up from trouble always ended up being God's people. Amen. There was a youth, I didn't even attend this youth group, there was a youth pastor that would come. I was, I was in trouble with the police, they were getting ready to take me, and they came, I had no idea who they were, and they came and said, no, he was with us, and I was like, yeah, I'm with them. Amen. Right? Amen. So, Today we're going to be reading out of the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah 1. And I titled this sermon, Made for a Purpose. Because I believe that God intended each and every one of us to do something. And no matter what season you are in life, there's a purpose. And purposes change. God, God has a way of making you grow, of stretching you. But everybody has a purpose here. Amen. There's a quote I like by Ben Franklin. He stated, he that is good for making excuses is suddenly good for anything else. And I'm kind of the king of making excuses, right? I was always like, it's somebody else's job. Somebody else is going to reach them. Somebody else could plant that church. Somebody else is going to do it. I always disqualified myself. When really, as soon as you accept Jesus Christ into your life, you're qualified. That's all it takes. Trust in the Father. Amen. Amen. So today we're going to dig into this first chapter of Jeremiah because he was somebody that also believed that he was unqualified. Amen. I'm going to pray before we get into the Word. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask that you sit with us, Lord, that you teach us, that you whisper to each and every one of us what you need us to hear. I ask that you remove anything of the enemy. Don't let him touch this place, Lord. There's no foothold for him here. In Jesus' name. Let your spirit flow through us as we read your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So I'm going to start right in uh, verse 4. It says, The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. 
Alas, sovereign Lord, I say. I do not know how to speak, I am too young. But the Lord said to me, do not say it, I am too young. You must go to everyone I send you. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and I will rescue you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. See today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. I'll stop right there. This brings me, there's three things you can learn from this chapter. First things you can get to, to know that you have a purpose. And the first one is that you have God's anointing. You see here, Jeremiah wasn't sent to, if you know anything about Jeremiah, he's a, also a pastor's kid. And his grandparent, his grandfather was also a pastor. But here, we see Jeremiah wasn't sent to just be a pastor. He was sent to be a prophet. Amen. And prophets are a little different than, than serving as a pastor. Pastor's duties are kind of predictable. Right? Everything's written down in the law. They give the word, they shepherd the people. You know what they're gonna do every week. But a prophet, they never know what's gonna come from day to day. The prophet labored to change the present so the nation would have a future. Pastors deal with external struggles, hospital visits, you know, rituals, offerings, normal traditions. But the prophet was trying to change hearts. The prophet's trying to go to people who don't want to hear God. Right? That's a little harder. When, you, when you're a pastor, you have people here, they know, most people come in here knowing they're going to hear a word from God. Yeah. But most people all in the world, they don't want to hear a word from God. Amen. I think some of us are called to be that voice. Amen. They're not too old, you're not too young. You don't look funny. I do. Me too. <laughs> Amen. Rip the <laughs> But everybody in here was handpicked by God for a purpose, Amen. for a reason. Amen. Right? My reason might be different than the next person, but they still have. Like, if God wants me to preach to five people every Sunday, and Amen. That's right, I'm going to do that. Amen. If He puts 500 people, Amen. Amen. I'll do it. I'll be a little shaky, but I'll do it. <laughs> the promise of God's purpose allows us to let go of our own plans. Amen. My plan, I, I grew up as an usher, and even at the church I served in Endicott, New York, I was director of the ushers. I like being in the back. I like greeting people. I like scrubbing the toilets. I like doing all that stuff where nobody sees me. Don't, don't point me out. Amen. No, don't, don't look at me. Don't <laughs> say anything to me. You know. But he called me to preach. And honestly, the first time I ever preached the word, I was 12 years old, and I was up here holding the pulpit, shaking. I did a word on confidence. I can tell you, even today, it's the same feeling. Right? I take the Lord's. The Lord's word very, very serious. Amen. Right? There's a lot that could go wrong. Amen. I don't always have it right. Amen. But I know where to look. Yes, come on. It gives the scriptures. So when you accept them into your heart and into your life, it creates that seal. Right? It gives you your purpose. And sometimes it sends people, he sends people your way to direct you to that purpose. To show you what you're really supposed to be doing. And honestly, sometimes he shows you what you really shouldn't be doing. Yeah. Sometimes some of us learn the hard way. Yeah, <laughs> so like Jeremiah and Jesus, we need to accept that our futures are not our own. Yeah. We are God's. Amen. And he has a distinct plan for each and every one of us in this room. Amen. Mm -hmm. I'll go on read first. 
Mais ou moins. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you see, Jeremiah? I see the branch of almond trees, I replied. The Lord said to me, You have seen correctly, for I am watching. For I am watching to see that my word is fulfilled. The word of the Lord came to me again. What do you see? I see a pot that is boiling, I answered. It is tilting toward us from the north. The Lord said to me, From the north, the disaster will be poured out unto all who live in the land. I am about to summon all the peoples of the northern kingdoms, declared the Lord. Their kings will come and set up their thrones in the entrance of the gates of Jerusalem. They will come against all her surrounding walls and against all the towns of Judah. So the second thing that we get out of this that we have, that we know we are called by God, is that we have God's provision. The Lord did not give Jeremiah a joyful message of deliverance, but a tragic message of judgment. Consequently, Jeremiah would be misunderstood, persecuted, arrested, and imprisoned. More than once his life was threatened. The people did not want to hear the truth. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah told them plainly that they were defying the Lord and disobeying the law and destined for judgment. <clears throat> now, isn't this a timely message? We talked about how there's no peace. Randy mentioned there's no peace in the world. Isn't it a timely message? Nobody wants to hear the good news. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and it's very unfortunate. And it's, it's, it's kind of disheartening because a lot of people have given up on wanting to tell the good news. A lot of people come up with the excuses, no one's going to listen. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you what, we planted a, a church in Endicott, New York, that's heavily laden with drugs, drug addiction, prostitution, gangs. Mm -hmm. And we started this church with, what, about 20 people, and every week, there's a hundred people. Amen. Every week there's new people coming through the doors. Amen. Every week there's people putting down their drugs. Amen. Turning their ways. Because people do need the Lord. People do want to listen. It's going to take some fearful people to, some brave people, not fearful, some brave people. Well, fearful of the Lord. Well, fearful of the Lord, yes. <laughs> to go out and, and go get them. Amen. There's people out in Green New York that need to go, we need to go get. Amen. Right? Because they think they're going to be judged by us. They think there's no place for them here. There's a place for everybody. God has a seat for everybody. Amen. We have seat. That's how we live our lives. We're supposed to. Jesus ate with those people who no one liked, right? That's our job. Right. To love them. To love everybody, no matter what they look like, no matter their backgrounds. Mm -hmm. And if he could do it in a tough place like in the county of New York, they told us it was going to be impossible. No yeah. one's going to care. Right. If we can do it in a place like Indiana, New York, God can move in green. Yeah. Amen. God is moving in green. Yes. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Yes. What we get from Jesus is his teaching contained mercy and judgment, grace and punishment. Just like Jeremiah, Jesus was te his teachings were dangerous too. Mm -hmm. That's what drove people to want to kill Jesus. His preaching was, was dangerous. It, it scared them. Mm -hmm. He was going against the norm. Mm -hmm. He wasn't talking about the day-to-day -day things. He was talking about the coming of the kingdom. And that's scary. We look in the world today and you can see a lot of signs. Yes. Mm -hmm. You can see a lot of signs. And we, we shouldn't be shaken. We know the answer. Yeah. If you have it's received the Lord, you know the answer. Right. You know what's going to happen at the end. My heart breaks for those who don't know or don't want to know because they don't understand. They have misunderstandings. People have misused our, our Lord's word. So people don't want to hear it. And I run into that all the time in Binghamton. A, a lot of people questioning. And the one answer that we have that we know is love. You're not going to get those people to change 
by arguing with them. I see it all the time on the internet. People argue back and forth. There's no point of arguing the truth. The only thing you can do is love people. Amen. No matter what. They spit at you. What do you do? Wipe it off? You still love them. Yeah. Amen. They curse at you. You still love them. Amen. You feed everybody. Amen. Everybody gets to eat. That's what the word is. Everybody is for everybody. Amen. When he died, he didn't die for just the people who choose him. He died for everybody, the whole world. Amen. He died knowing that people won't choose it. Right? So we have to go out there knowing that there's going to be some people that are, are not going to hear. They're not going to want us there. But if the Lord tells you to go, you better go. Yeah. If the Lord tells you to speak, you better speak. Because yes. he'll send the provisional whale to eat you up. It, in my life, it was, it was the depression, the anxiety. So I kept blaming my depression for why I can't serve. I'm too anxious. I can't speak. I had a studying problem. I have a studying problem. But God still used me. He still calls me over and over. So I know he calls everybody in this room. I know there's people. I know there's a pastor out there. I know there's somebody out there for you guys. Amen. I know this is a faithful church. I feel the Holy Spirit. Yes. Amen. He loves his people. He never will leave you and forsake you. Yes. Amen. Verse 15. I will pronounce my judgment on my people because of their wickedness in forsaking me. Amen. And burning incenses, incense, incense to other gods, and worshiping with their hands have made, and worshiping what their hands have made. So that's 17. Get yourself ready. Stand up and say to them whatever I command you. Do not be terrified by them, or I will terrify you before them. Amen. Today, I have made you a fortified city, an iron pillar, and a bronze, sorry, and a bronze wall to stand against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, the officials, the priests, and the people of the land. They will fight against you, but will not overcome you, for I am with you, and I rescue you, declares the Lord. So this is the third thing that we get out of here. We get God's anointing when we accept him. He anoints us. God's provision, he already set the plan up for us. He already knows what's going to happen. He knows the troubles we're going to have. He knows the hardships we're going to have. And he promises to be there through it, the whole thing, yes. no matter what, good or bad. The third thing we have is God's authority. You see, he says in 17, he said he made you a fortified city. Right? To me, that's, that's an impenetrable force. We are a force. When we're working, walking in the authority of the Lord, nothing can stop us. Nothing can break us. Amen. Remember? The weapon can be formed, and it won't prosper. Amen. Amen. It will be formed, and it will be. Here in Jeremiah, this, in this verse, verse 17 to 19, God was expecting immediate action from him, right? He said, now get ready. Stand up and tell everything that I command you. God called Jeremiah to act. He was called to move among the people. He was called to deliver an offensive message. And I can tell you, we're in the, we're in the month they call Pride Month, June. Our message is offensive. Amen to the pride community, to the LGBTQ community. That's right. It's offensive to people who don't want to get off drugs. It's offensive to people who want to party. Yep. It's offensive who want to live life their way. It's offensive to people who think they know the right way. Amen. Mom. It offends people. It does. You know, me being a young guy, I know I've offended some elders. Amen. Right? Because the way I the way I see life the, the the life that I went through the church that I grew up in, in the middle of Binghamton had a lot of different problems than a lot of churches. So the way I was speaking about the Bible seemed a little radical. That we allow drug addicts to be in our worship team. 
right? Of course, they have to get off and receive Jesus and get off drugs, right? But we allow that. People look, you're like, isn't that the guy who does drugs down the street? But he's different now. He's saved. Amen. Right? And sometimes that rubs people the wrong way. But if my God loves them, guess what I'm going to do? Amen. 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 If my God could use them, if he could use someone like me, he could use someone like them. Amen. Just because I didn't walk through what they've been through, or you know, ran away from God as far as they have, does not mean anything. If you look at all the heroes in the Bible, they all had something. If we looked at the heroes in the Bible before knowing who they were, we wouldn't think they were qualified. Yeah. We would look at Paul and Peter and be like, what's wrong with you guys? Mm -hmm. right? But God sees them and he's like, that's the person. God's looking at you guys and saying, that's my person. Yeah. Got a job for you. Yes. It's not done. It's yes. not done until you're in the grave. Yes. Amen. Right? As long as you're working, you got to work. Amen. It might look different. You know, you might be in a season where you're preaching to 100 people. You might be in a season where you're feeding five people. You might be in a season where you're feeding a thousand. He's going to move. Yes. And it's going to be whatever he wants. It's going to yes. look however he it's wants right. it to look. Amen. There's no failing with the Lord. That's what's yeah. the... The awesome thing is, there's, there's no failing. There's no way we can do any wrong. Right? As long as we're in his will and in his presence and we're asking him to lead us, he's going to take care of us. We're mm -hmm. always going to be in the right. And I used to take that. So I, I ran from the church. Three years I was out of church because I was being judgmental. That's what it came down to. Yeah. I seen a lot of hip, hypocrisy, a lot of people saying one thing and not doing the other. So I decided, like, I don't need church. I'm just going to read my Bible and do my own thing, mm. right? So I was, I was going to Two Rivers Church in Johnson City, and I, was, I, was, I probably fell far away from God as I ever did. You know, things weren't going right. Things weren't going right in my marriage. Things weren't going right in my life financially. And, and I went to a Thursday night service, and I, and I see this man to the right, he keeps looking at me all service. We're looking at each other. He looks familiar. I don't really know where he's from. So they had an altar call. I went and cried to God because even though I wasn't attending church regularly, I happened to be there that Thursday night. And I knew I needed something. Mm -hmm. I knew the God that I grew up with wasn't the God being shown to me. It wasn't the God I was seeking. So I'm praying and I'm crying and I'm like, Lord, send me a sign. And I actually prayed these words, like, hit me in the face with the sign so I know it's you. Amen. And the guy that was looking at me all, all night comes up to me and starts talking to me. And he, he kind of prophesies over my life. He's saying, he says things like, uh, I feel like, I feel like you're like, you got these great walls you're going to take down. You know, he starts talking about Joshua and, and the battles of Jericho. Right? And he's like, you, you're going to be a great warrior. And then at the end, he's like, what? By the way, what's your name? And I'm like, my name's Jericho. <laughs> so that's the sign. Right? It doesn't get more clear than that. Like, okay. And, I'm, and, now, and what he asked me to do, now I'm three years from nine church. He, he asked me to be his youth pastor. So it wasn't like, come to my church. And he was, it was at a different church. Right? So what is he doing there? Right, we're at a different church. He's like, I want you to be my youth pastor. I'm like, you don't know me from Adam. You don't know what I did. You don't know what I'm in the middle of doing because I wasn't walking with him. But I knew I needed something from the Lord. And of course, so I, I gave the, the good Christian answer and I said, I'll pray about it. Amen. <laughs> pray about it. Even though I asked God for a big sign. That wasn't enough. I prayed about it. I went home and I went to pray and I knew that's the answer. That's what God wants me to do. So sometimes we, we put the blinders on ourselves. We put the limitations. God said, guess what? You pastor. And I'm going, but I mocked you for years. Right? I called you people no good. Mm -hmm. Called them hypocrites. Mm -hmm. And I kept saying, I despise myself. I can't lead the next generation. But I was perfect for the group of kids that I got. Because a lot of those kids came from broken families. Mm -hmm. People that mocked God. People that used God wrong. Like they punished them with God, yeah. right? Then that's what I was doing. I had that mentality, so I understood how to talk to these kids. When we receive the Lord, like here in Jeremiah, God expects obedience. And immediately if we 
if we don't follow God, we're, we're going to be subject to God's wrath. Because if it says, if it says here, <clears throat> that they will fight against you, but will not overcome you. Amen. And he also said earlier in 16, or was it? Sorry, wrong verse. 17, get yourself ready, stand up, and say to them whatever I command you. Do not be terrified by them, or I will terrify you before them. So God controls everything. We give the devil too much credit. We think it's the enemy. If you read, we read Moses, if you read in, in Genesis, Moses, or God hardened Pharaoh's heart. Yeah. Right? He controlled <clears throat> that. He hardened his heart. So we don't think he will do that to people around you right. to send a message. Right. If you're not doing what he's supposed to do, he'll send messages. Amen. Right? <laughs> sometimes people need to be shaken up. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm not the type that needs a car accident to know that my father needs attention. But he'll do it. Amen. He'll send hurricanes to get your attention. Yeah. Amen. He signed, he'll send the fish to swallow Jonah. Yes, Sometimes it's a little dramatic. Right? But he needs you to do what you're supposed to do. So me, he sent, he sent people to make me feel like I wasn't loved. Because I was reading the messages wrong. Because mm. when the world shuts you down, the thing you should go to is your father. father. Amen. I was finding love in people. I wanted people to like me. So when they weren't, that's where my depression led. That's where I thought I wasn't good enough because people weren't accepting me. When God already appointed me, he already sealed, like he did with Jeremiah, he already touched, he already told me what, what's gonna happen. Here's your job. And I couldn't see it. It says, do not be intimidated by them or I'll cause you be terrified by them. We think that the enemy, you know, we often claim the enemy what God's doing. God controls everything. It may seem like he's not the loving father, or the father of peace that we talk about, but if his wrath is coming upon you, it's because you're not following what you're supposed to do. If you see wars and all the rumors of wars, if, if you do history and look at the history of what's going on over there, a lot of those places aren't they once were fearful of the Father, and they, they aren't anymore. And if he sends armies against Jeremiah here, what do you think he's going to do against his people in the real world? He's going to shake it up. And he does promise to protect you. Because what does he do immediately on all the stories of the Bible when they start revering him again? He eases up. Like with King David. He let... David be overthrown. He let David go through all the trials he went through. And when David was ready, he started sending the right people to build his kingdom. Amen. Yes. So when you are ready, once you, once you get your head out of your butt, he's going to send you the right people. He expects obedience. And it's our job as believers to follow Christ, right? We follow him. And it's also our job to have people follow us as we follow him. Everybody has a following, whether it's one people or a hundred people or a thousand people. Especially fathers, you know, today's Father's Day. We have children that are looking to us. They're following us, everything we do. When I wasn't with God, because where my kids weren't, they weren't with God either. When I started following the Lord, my, my son led uh, Sunday school. It's a Wednesday night church. He's inviting people to church. He's doing it a lot younger than I was. I didn't start till I was a little older. I, w I was keeping the faith for myself. You know, that's my Amen. Life. But it's meant to be shared. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. When I became aligned with the Lord, it's my household became aligned with the Lord. Amen. Where I, before I was trying to do it myself, I'm like, Lord, why aren't they listening? It's because I wasn't listening. <laughs> if I'm not reading, how do I expect them to read? Amen. If I'm not listening to God, how do I expect them to listen to God? Thank and it's our job to follow Jesus. So Jesus obeyed. So, whenever you think about Jesus and how he lived his life, remember that his heart was always willing and obedient. He was willing to talk to the fishermen. He was willing to talk to the tax collectors, the people that were frowned upon. He was willing to talk to them. And he was obedient to God. I know many times in the gospel he said, 
mentioned about his father's word, his business, you know, his, his plans. Jesus always pointed up. And that's what we should do. When somebody's dealing with depression, when you're speaking to them, point up. Point, to, point them to the Father. Yes. Don't try to give them any kind of remedies. Yes. There's no therapist. Not that they're bad people, because there are certain therapists. But your first, when I talk to somebody, the first thing I want to say is, have you prayed about it? Mm -hmm. That's what we should be pointing to. Have you prayed about it? He'll direct you to a therapist. He'll direct you to remedies. Right? Not that those things are bad. They're necessary, but we have to go to him first because he created everything. He created the minds for a therapist. He created the minds to make the medicine that helps us. So we got to go to him first. What should we do? How, how can we get rid of this? He also could make it go like this. He's, he's flipped people's lives in an instant. I've seen it happen. Right? I know of his power. If you think about the life of Jesus, even here with Jeremiah, there was no hesitation, there was no questioning. They didn't have to go back and forth. When God told them to do something, they did it. How many of us would, have, would stay on, get beat on the cross if that was, right? He didn't have to do it. The night before, he was asking God to take the cup from him. He was asking if there was anything else. Because he's human, just like us. Just like when God told me to be a pastor, I was praying, like, there has to be something else for me. You, you don't want me speaking at I'm not the smartest person. I have trouble memorizing scripture. I know where to look, and that, that's the Bible, right? It's like, what, tell me a verse about, you know, I'm, I'm going to stare at you like a deer in the headlights. Like, oh, a verse, yeah, it's in there somewhere. Mm -hmm. It's in there. Yep. God will take care of you, it's in there. But he's, he chose me, and he constantly chose me. It took me years to realize that he was choosing me because I was disqualified myself. Right? He put this church here. Somebody had a God-ordained plan for this church. That's why it exists today. Mm. They're following the call. Amen. Do you think he's going to leave you guys without a shepherd? Come on now. Right? That's not how he's Come on it. now! <laughs> he doesn't leave anything. He doesn't do anything halfway. No. He bankrupt heaven. He came here. So we needed somebody to save us. So what do you do? Oh, well, I'm going to come as a human, and I'm going to die. And not only die, he was going to get whipped for hours and beaten and spit on and mocked. And all he did was love everybody. Yes. So don't you think that all we're doing is loving people that we're going to get treatment like that? Mm -hmm. That's what I was doing. I was loving people. I thought I was doing the right thing. And people weren't listening or people were mocking or people were running doing their own thing. I got bitter because of that. Not knowing that that's the call we, we pick up sometimes. That's what it's going to look like sometimes. It's going to be ugly. Yep. But when you see more souls raising their hands for Jesus, when you see people who never had the opportunity to know the Lord, know the Lord, your mind will change. Your hearts will change. The way you interact are going to change. Mm -hmm. Right? If you know, every week uh, we go out and we wave. We're, we're crazy people. We wave on Main Street. It's a busy, busy street in Endicott. And there's people that come by and give us the finger. There's people that yell, 666. And now we know what we do when that happens. We cheer louder yeah. because we're doing the right thing. Yes. Right? If they're mocking, we had a guy coming holding a sign mocking us, saying, Hail Satan. And that's, that, that's a win. Yep. They don't like us. That's great. They didn't like Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's perfect. Perfect place to sway for. So I want to ask this morning what has God called you to this morning? What's your next step? What was he calling you to do? And are you acting immediately? Are you being obedient? Are you moving to it? Because maybe the struggles you're going through in your life are because you're not hearing what he's telling you. You're not moving when he's telling you to move. I know me growing up, if, if I was being too noisy in church, sitting next to my mom, she'll give me that little nudge. And sometimes a little pinch. Like, God does that. He'll give you that little nudge. You'll know you're, you're not in his, in his will. You'll start feeling things that you shouldn't be feeling when you're following God. Right. You shouldn't be feeling depressed. You shouldn't be feeling anxious. You shouldn't be filled with rage. That should, those should be signs that you need to spend a little time in your prayer closet. 
get around good people. Yes. This is a good church. We got people out there who need this church. Yes. They need yes. to get around you guys. They need to see the love you guys have. Amen. Yeah, I've only spent a few hours here this morning, and I could tell that the love of God is here. Amen. Amen. I could tell that you guys love the word. Yes. Amen. We need to spread it out there. Amen. We got to get them in here. Right. Wrangle them in, you know. The right. rodeo. Come here. Yes, I got something for you. Got a little Jesus here. I believe that God is going to fulfill his purpose for this church and for everybody in here. I agree. I believe that we are all anointed. I agree. I believe that God has already set the playbook for everybody in here. He gives us authority. We gotta walk in the authority. Amen. Nothing's nothing's gonna stop anybody. I mean, nothing's gonna stop the next pastor. God's probably this is exactly what's going on. God's preparing them for a season. Mm. He or them, he or her. There's gonna be a person that's being prepared right now. Yes. Amen. You know, there's a time for everything. It took David well almost thirty years. Right? It took me. 31 years, 33, 31 years to realize that, okay, God, I'm going to be a pastor. Okay, God, I'm going to preach your word. And even with that, I was trying to, I was like, yeah, I'll be a pastor. I'll just be the pastor of the ushers. I don't have to preach. Amen. But he kept giving me opportunities to preach. He gives me more opportunities to preach. So I'm like, I'm, immediate action. When I got reached out to speak here, immediate action. Yeah, I'll do it. Amen. Because I'm, I know what happens when I say no. Right. Yes. I don't like that anymore. Yes. So if you guys will uh, stand, I want to give you guys a blessing. Uh, pray over. Pray over you guys. You guys could reach out your hands to the Lord. Amen. Because God's on the move. He's on the move in New York. He's on. He's on the move in the world. And we're listening to the wrong thing this morning. So if you guys will, with your arms stretched out. Lord. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you that we're able to come and hear your word. Thank you for your word. Thank you for sending your son to die for us, Lord. Thank you for this church in Green New York, Lord. I pray that you bless each and every person in this room, Lord, tenfold. I pray that they're able to reach out to their neighbors. I pray that they'll reach out to those around them, that the anointing falls off them and onto the people. And that there is a revival, Lord. That there's a great revival in New York. That people come and cry out to you, Lord. That you are able to break all the boundaries and chains. That everybody in here, that they're free, Lord. That they walk in authority knowing that you came and conquered everything. That you conquered everything before they get there. That they already won every battle that they're in. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Amen.